Right, this is a double bill of integration questions from May 2006, I think it is. Uh, firstly, opening question of the exam is an integration question. We're going to integrate this. Basically, what differentiates to make that? Now, 6x squared must have come from x cubed because when you differentiate, you lower the power by 1. Now, when you differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. So we need to double this to make 6x squared. 2 must have come from differentiating 2x. And the last bit, x to the power minus a half must have come from x to the power a half, because when you again when you differentiate you lower the power by one. Uh, now this differentiates to make half x to the power a half, so we need again to double it to make it equal to one x to the power a half minus a half. Now often forgotten about is the plus c on the end. That would be worth four four marks, and it's four of the easiest marks you'll ever get. Uh, let's let's move it down a bit uh, to the other question. I saw it as I was going through that there were two. Here we go. Number ten on this. Right, this is slightly different. We're we're given the gradient of something. I'll give you time to read this or pause it. Uh, we're given the gradient of a function and we're asked to find the function. In other words, we're told what what it, what the happen what the result is when we're differentiated. We need to work backwards. So the answer is same as same as before. 2x must have come from x squared, and that's exactly x squared. There's no need to worry about any multiplier at front because x squared differentiates to make 2x. Now, 3 over x squared, I'm going to write like this using indices. So, 3 over x squared, right, is 3x to the power minus 2. Now, that must have come from x to the power minus 1 because when you differentiate, you lower the power by 1. Just be careful with negatives. Differentiating this gives minus x to the power minus 2. So we need to multiply it by minus 3. I'll talk through that quickly now. The x squared is obvious, becomes 2x. Now this, to get x to the power minus 2, we must have used x to the power minus 1 before we differentiated it. When we differentiate x to the power minus 1, we get minus x to the power minus 2. So we need to multiply that minus by minus 3 to get plus 3 in the question. Now we need to whack a plus c on the end here. Now in this question, we're going to find the value of c by using their clue. They're telling us that when x is 3, y is 7.5. So use that clue to find this, or f of x is 7.5. Use that clue. When x is 3, I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but when x is 3, this gives us 9 minus 3 over x. In fact, I will write this out because often these are badly substituted. 3 over x is what that means. So write it out like this if you're going to substitute numbers in. Plus c. And now, when x is 3, this becomes 9 minus 1 add c. So 8 add c. And that tells us c must be minus a half. Let's talk through that again, because I'm writing as I'm talking here. This is the function that differentiates to make that. Now we need to find the value of c. We do that by putting in the clue the coordinates into here. When x is 3, we get 9 minus 1 add something. So 8 add something. And that 8 add something is 7.5. So the something must be minus a half. Now we're going to use that. This is basically a check for us. It's a nice easy mark. Verify that f of minus 2 equals 5. So we put minus 2 into this function now. Um, I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but I will replace c now with its value of minus a half. And we're going to put minus 2 into that, and we're hoping to get 5. So if we put minus 2 into that, we get 4. This becomes minus 3 over minus 2, which is plus 3 over 2. And if you're a step ahead, you can see that when we subtract the half, we get 4, add 1.5, take away half, which is 5 as required. And I'd write as required if this was an exam and I wasn't writing dodgily with the mouse. Now part C, find the equation of the tangent to C at the point minus 2, 5. Uh, giving your answer in the form that where A, B and C are integers. I might as well just do that, although it's now nothing to do with this. It's now finding the equation of a straight line. So the equation of the tangent at this point, we know the gradient here. That's the gradient. So we can find the gradient when x is minus 2. It's 2 times minus 2 add 3 over minus 2 squared. 
So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Add 3 over, and minus 2 squared is 4. So I think the gradient should be that. 2 times minus 2, add 3 over 4. Uh, which equals and it's minus three and a quarter, which I'll write as minus 13 quarters. So that's the gradient. So y equals mx plus c, we get y equals m. Now, oh, this is where my hand won't be very good at this. Wish I'd not bothered starting this now, but y equals mx add c, and I'll because I've used C, I'm going to call it K in this question. Um, now, putting the numbers in, 5 equals, put X equals minus 2 into this, that would make that 13 over 2. So we get 5 equals 13 over 2. Add something. Take the 13 over 2 onto that side, we'll get uh, minus 3 over 2. So K must be minus 3 over 2. So now if I replace k with its value, I'd write this out properly if I was doing it, but I'll write minus 3 over 2 there. I'm not checking this, I'm going along, so check to make sure I'm not making any errors. Now we need to leave everything in terms of integers like that form, so basically we multiply everything by 4 to get rid of fractions. Multiplying everything by 4 to get rid of fractions, uh, and then taking everything over to one side. So multiply that by 4, multiply that by 4, and multiply in this by 4. So we end up with the equation being, that's just a line there by the way, end up with the equation being 4y plus 13x plus 6 equals 0. I won't bother writing that, but 4y plus 13x plus 6 equals 0.